national governing body of this traditional Japanese martial art. In this tape, we should be looking at part of the WJJF syllabus for black belt. The black belt syllabus has been devised by the national coach, Soki Robert Clark, 9th Dan. First, let's meet some senior members of the Federation. Spartaco Bertoletti is the president of the WJJF. Mr. Bertoletti is resident in Milan, and he is responsible for international promotion. Jan de Jong is a vice president, and is a representative of the Federation's Australasian division. Mr. de Jong's speciality is Penjak Silat. Here he is demonstrating some techniques using the short stick. Maurizio Silvestri is a senior member of the WJJF and a representative of Italy. He is a journalist and lives in Livorno. Mr. Silvestri specializes in high-level scissors technique, and it is through the input of experts like him that such techniques are becoming increasingly popular in jiu-jitsu. Chema Domenech is a WJJF representative for Spain. He specializes in weapons technique. Here he is demonstrating tonfa. Mr. Domenech is coach to a number of Spanish police organizations. He is assisted in his promotion of jiu-jitsu throughout Spain by Paco Gomez and Dorit Suet. Hans Demant represents the Danish Jiu-Jitsu Association on the WJJF. He has been a member of the Federation for many years and here demonstrates some of the techniques used in the Danish system. based in Catania. He is the representative for Sicily on the WJJF, and here he demonstrates a selection of techniques taken from the Sicilian syllabus. Mike Wall is the WJJF Swedish representative. The Swedish system is slightly different to that practiced in most other European countries insofar as it uses the absolute minimum of applied force in its response to attacks. Martin Dixon represents the British Goshen Kempo School within the WJJF. Here he is demonstrating a flowing series of techniques which go to make up one of the training forms used in the Federation. Training of this type requires both skill and the ability to think on the move. senior instructors of the WJJF. He works closely with Soki Clark and teaches on numerous international courses. Here, he demonstrates a series of knife defenses, performed slowly so that you can pick out the important points. Terence Parker is a senior instructor of the WJJF based in the southeast of England. He runs a number of WJJF schools there which are noted for the quality of their practice. Jiu 
Jiu-Jitsu is one of the oldest of the traditional Japanese martial arts. It is the all-embracing martial system of the hereditary warrior, the samurai, and includes such elements as strikes, punches, kicks, holds, throws, locks, and grapples. Though Jiu-Jitsu is traditionally Japanese, it had virtually become extinct by the early 20th century, thanks to its replacement by the combat sport of Judo. Europe is its second home, because it was there that the art was brought back to life and reshaped to meet the needs of modern people. The following techniques are taken from the black belt syllabus of this newly revitalized system. The black belt syllabus of the WJJF contains more techniques than could be shown on just one tape. Therefore, this is the first of a series. It consists of throws, counter throws, and striking techniques. The first part of the syllabus requires students to demonstrate a selection of 25 straight throws. The demonstration begins at normal speed, and when the throws have all been demonstrated, some of them will be broken down for further study. Body drop technique with a step over hold down. Yes. Half shoulder. A leg throw with a lock. Inside hop technique followed here with a kick. Drawing knee followed by a punch and pressing shoulder lock. A sweeping knee throw with a neck lock. An up knee wheel with a choke hold. An arm, shoulder and wrist throw. A front scissors throw. A reverse body drop. And a dropping version of body drop. A scissors and naked choke hold. A cross hock throw. A front scoop throw. A rear scoop throw, followed by a double straight arm lever. A sweeping ankle throw. A head, hip and knee throw. A rear throw with a step over neck lock. An outer wine throw. An inner wine throw. A crab's claw, scissors throw. Yes. A corner throw. Yes. yes. Rolling ankle throw. Yes. An inner lift. Yes. A hip throw. A reclining leg throw. Rice bail throw. We have selected seven techniques from the previous throws for closer study in the analysis of technique section. First technique is a drawing ankle throw. This should always be used when the opponent is moving forwards and onto you. It's very important to place your right hand into the opponent's armpit as you pull down on his other wrist with your left hand. into a kneeling position and lever the opponent's elbow against your knee to turn him onto his front. Strike to an atemi point, here to the medulla, apply pressure downward with both your hands 
against the opponent's shoulder blade. The next technique is a sweeping knee. Step to the side of the opponent as he begins his punch and knee him in the solar plexus or groin. Step around, leaning forward and putting all your weight on the left leg while straightening the right against the opponent's knee. Follow him and strike to the back of his head with your right elbow. Then bring your right arm around and under his armpit so you force his head forward. Apply a straight arm lock. Now we shall analyze a dropping version of the body drop throw. Step in and use a cross block. Strike to the opponent's ribs. Stepping back on your left leg, at the same time, thrust your right leg forward in front of his ankle and push against his armpit. Step across with your right leg and hook into the back of his head with your heel. Slide your foot on past his neck and hook it under his left armpit. Then sit upright on your left knee, lifting the opponent's right arm to apply a wrist lock. Fourth technique to be analyzed is a rear scoop. Begin with an X block to the opponent's punch, but remember to keep both fists closed tightly. Then bring your knee up sharply into the groin or solar plexus, strike with the right elbow onto the back of his neck, then reach under his groin with your left arm and thrust down with the right. Stamp down onto his spine. Step forward and past his left shoulder, reach down and grasp both wrists. Pull into a double shoulder dislocation hold, lean forward to maximize leverage. Fifth technique is a rear throw. Yes. Block his punch, stepping with both legs out to the side. Place the palm of your right hand against the opponent's solar plexus and grip his elbow with your left. Provided you drop below his center of gravity, then you'll need little force to roll him over you. Take your right leg over the opponent's head, hook behind his neck. Then slip it under his left shoulder, barring his head forwards. Keep hold of his right arm. Rise up and into a kneeling position and sit back. Sixth technique is a crab's claw yes. scissors throw. Yes. Lean back as the opponent throws a punch and at the same time pivot on your left foot and pull the opponent across your body. Drop your right hand to the floor as your right leg slides around and behind the opponent's feet. Bring your left foot up and across the opponent's midsection. Apply a figure four lock. Seventh and final analysis is of a rice bale throw. Block his punch as you drop your center of gravity, counter punching to the base of his sternum. Then reach around and behind the opponent's head with your right arm and draw his head forward. Sit down, drawing the opponent forward and off balance. Roll with the opponent but keep hold of his head. Rise into a kneeling position and strike. We will be looking at counter throws in this next section of the black belt syllabus. These show how to resist the opponent's technique by applying an opposing technique of your own. The first counter throw is used against a half shoulder throw. A counter to a reclining leg throw. A counter to an outside hock or hook throw. counter to a hip throw. A counter to a body drop throw. A counter to a stomach throw. A counter to a full shoulder throw. 
counter to the opponent's shoulder wheel. A counter to a shoulder wheel or a reclining leg throw. A counter to a leg throw. A counter to a full shoulder throw. We have selected four techniques from the foregoing to analyse here in greater detail. The first analysis is of the counter to a reclining leg throw. Sit down as the opponent is reaching to apply a reclining leg throw. Lean back and swing your left leg up and across the front of the opponent's throat, forcing him backwards. Roll with him, swinging your right leg over the top, but keeping your left instep against his Adam's apple. Make sure his arm is straight, and lock the elbow with your shin as you come to a kneeling position. Second analysis is of the counter to a hip throw. Pull back on your right leg as the opponent steps forward. Push against his hip and elbow as he tries to apply the throw, then drop down, hooking your right arm between his upper legs. Shoot your legs to the side, twist your body, and pull on his right arm as you push up with your right. Move with him, throwing your right arm over the top of his shoulder. Bring your right knee up and forward so that it goes past his right elbow. Then hook it back, trapping the forearm in a figure four lock. Lean well forward and press your palm over the opponent's face. The third analysis looks at the counter to a full shoulder throw. As the opponent steps in to throw, push against his left hip so you force him to twist too far. This brings him round to face you, so be on the lookout for the right fist. Block the punch with your left arm and step past the opponent's front leg. Push hard into him as you apply a cross-hop counter. Keep hold of his right arm as you drop into a sitting position. Pull his arm out and across your hip in a cross-arm lock. Fourth and final analysis is of the counter to a leg throw or shoulder wheel. Step back as the opponent steps in. Push against his right shoulder with your left hand. Turn with your opponent. Take his arm up behind him into a back hammer. Bring your right arm across the front of his throat. This closes off the windpipe and blood supply. Combination throws are used when the opponent resists your first technique. The black belt should be able to switch quickly between two or three alternatives. A back hock into a rear throw. A drawing ankle throw into a sweeping knee. A half shoulder into a rice bale throw. An inside hock into a drawing knee. An inside hook, followed by a transitional hip throw. A half shoulder into a figure four lock and throw. We have selected four techniques from the foregoing to analyse here in greater detail. The first is the back hock into rear throw. Step into the opponent, taking his punch out to the side as you step into a throwing position. The opponent resists. Pull his left arm and roll him down into a rear throw. Continue the roll. Place your right arm around the back of his neck. Bring your right knee up and lock.
The second is the drawing ankle with sweeping knee combination. Step across the opponent and strike at his shin with your left foot. Turn, lean forward and sweep his knee with your right leg. Drop to the floor and place your right arm behind his head under his arm. Lean back to apply pressure. The third analysis is of a half shoulder changing to a rice bale throw. Step forward, cross block with your right arm. Strike the opponent's ribs and take his right wrist in your left. Continue stepping around and strike upwards. He resists. Lift and step under his arm, twisting as you go. Slide your left hand under his right arm, looping your right arm round his neck. Follow him over. And trap his head. Bring your right leg forward and lever his right arm over it, applying pressure against his elbow joint. The fourth and final analysis is of a combined outer hook and transitional hip throw. Step to the side, pulling down on the right arm. He resists. Counter the resistance by stepping across whilst placing your arm behind his head and dropping on one knee. Aid the throw by pushing against his left leg. Apply a bar and collar choke. Now we're going to take a close look at the inside leg sweep to see the precise details of his application. Inside leg sweep yes. is particularly useful against the advancing opponent. Step forward on your right leg and cross block. Strike to the ear. Take hold of the opponent's ear, pivot on your right leg and sweep against his leading leg. Ensure that your own leg remains rigid. Keep hold of his right arm, drop down on one knee and punch behind the ear. Next, we're going to look at some defenses against the kick. A defense against a front kick. An alternative response to front kick using an X block. A scooping block against front kick. Rotating block. Defense against a roundhouse kick. Defense against a roundhouse kick using a scissors movement. Defense against a back kick. Defense against back kick followed by punch. Now we will analyze these movements. Let's look at that first defense against front kick in more detail. Step to the side and block the kick with your left arm. Trap the opponent's foot by closing your elbow on it and step forward into him. Reap the supporting leg away as you push forward against his shoulder. First strike him in the groin, then push his legs to one side, finishing him with a punch to just below the ear. Now let's look at the X-block defense. The opponent punches, you step back and block. Bring both arms back as he kicks and X-block him just above the ankles. Straighten and twist his legs so he's forced to turn away. Lift his trapped leg high so he drops on his face and kick him as he lands. Drop onto one knee and take up your final guard position. This too is a defense to a punch and kick combination. Block the opponent's punch with your left arm and scoop his kick with your right. Draw his left arm down as you raise his foot high and step in close. Lean forwards and strike his neck with your right forearm. 
reef his supporting leg and go down with him to the mat. Push his right arm out of the way as you reach under his neck with your right. Then link fingers and apply a choke. Defense against a front kick using reverse block. Step across with your left foot, turning your back on the opponent as you go. Strike to the kidneys. Take his collar with your right hand, sweep his leg, and pull him back at the same time. Drop down and punch him below the ear. The next technique analyzes defense against a roundhouse kick. Block the opponent's kick with your left arm as you slide forward on your left leg. Drop onto your hands as you sweep your right foot around and behind the opponent's supporting leg. Twist back and take him down with a scissors movement. Then finish with a strike to the groin. Our final analysis looks at defense to back kick and punch. Step back from the kick and knock it down. The opponent continues turning and throws a punch, which you block with your left arm. Slide into him, striking him in the ribs as you go. Turn in close and lift him into a half shoulder throw. Finish with a punch to the medulla. Next, we're going to look at another application of the X block. Use an X block against a downward strike to the head. X block the opponent's punch, pull down, bring your knee up sharply into his groin or solar plexus, Strike with your right elbow to the back of his neck, then reach under his groin with your left arm, pushing down with the right. Stamp down onto his spine with your left heel, then step forward. Reach down and grasp both his wrists, drawing his arms up straight and forcing them forward in a double shoulder dislocation hold. Lean forward to maximize leverage. sequence demonstrates defense against a double punch. Block the opponent's first punch with your left arm and his second with your right. Keep in close contact with both his fists. Bring his left arm down and tuck it under his right, at the same time turning your back, stepping through and moving into him. Lean forward and lever him over your right shoulder. Jiu-Jitsu uses all parts of the hand in its striking techniques. This is the palm heel, which is particularly effective in close combat. Here we see evidence of the Chinese influence on the development of Jiu-Jitsu. These open-handed strikes are obviously derived from the iron palm system developed exclusively in China. Now we're going to look at the application of this strike in a little more detail. Palm heel strike is always used with a light, fast, glancing action that skates it over the target. Energy comes from the hip action 
plus elbow extension. Notice how the wrists bend back and the fingers extend. This makes palm heel a safe weapon to use on a variety of bony targets. Note also that the elbow is a backup weapon in the event that a circular palm heel misses its target. Targets are always the atemi points of the body. Don't squander the effectiveness of this technique by lashing out at any old target. Make every strike count. Practice several palm heel strikes, one after the other, using both straight and circular paths. This helps to teach versatility. Now we come on to look at knife hand techniques. The jiu-jitsu knife hand is delivered with a slightly cupped hand. Both single and double hand strikes are used to the atemi points of the opponent's body. Strikes are nearly always circular and use a light cutting action. The elbow behaves like a spring to help return the spent strike back to ready position. Practice knife hands together with blocks and train so you can deliver a series of knife hands to different parts of the opponent's body in quick succession. And now a closer look at the knife hand. Block and use knife hand to the side of the neck. Block followed by knife hand attack to the opponent's kidneys. Block, followed by throat attack. A step to the side, a block, and then attack to the opponent's neck. A step back, a block, a strike first to the throat, then to the groin, and finally to the throat again. A cross block, then a strike to the other side of the neck, a second block, and a strike to the other side of the neck. A block, and a strike to the front of the throat. Now some details of where to strike. First the temples, then the sides of the jaw. The cheekbones, then to the sides of the neck. Downward strike onto the collarbones. An upward strike into the throat, to the base of the sternum, to the stomach, to the groin, then to the knees, the front as well as the rear. Strike to the base of the spine, kidney lower back area, the back of the lungs, middle of the shoulders, and the back of the neck. And the medulla part of the brain. The elbow is an excellent close range weapon. The elbow is used with the fist clenched since this both reinforces it and makes the joint more resistant to injury. Use the elbow in a variety of ways to suit the circumstances. 
but be prepared to move with the opponent, so range is always correct for its use. Now a closer look at the elbow technique. Block, step in, and use upswinging elbow to the opponent's chin. Block, step up, and use a backwards travelling elbow to the side of the opponent's face. Block, then use a cross elbow strike into the opponent's jaw, then return to strike the other side of the jaw. Block and seize the arm, then step in for a descending elbow strike to the collarbones. Here we see use of the elbow strike to attack the opponent's kidneys. First turn the opponent, then elbow strike to the kidneys, following up with the back fist to the back of the head. Block, strike the floating ribs, twist and strike to the other side, finish with an elbow strike to the jaw. Block the opponent's double punch, strike back into his floating ribs, then twist the other way, attacking his jaw with a reverse elbow strike. Now repeat the double attack to the ribs, strike at his jaw, and now the opponent traps the arm. Twist the other way, and elbow strike the ribs. Then step under the arm and apply a lock while striking the back of the head. The bottom of the fist is said to be one of the strongest parts of the hand to strike with. Here we see the bottom fist used in conjunction with back fist. Both have the same fist shape though they use different parts of it. Bottom fist strikes with a pad of flesh below the little finger, whereas back fist uses the top of the knuckles. Use bottom fist as though you are using it to hammer a nail into a piece of wood. Apply both techniques with a fast action and bring them back quickly so they can be used again if necessary. Use both techniques against the opponent's atemi points and train so that you can deliver repeated attacks to different areas, whether using one hand or both in succession. And now a closer look at this technique. Follow cross block with a back fist strike to the side of the opponent's jaw. Use cross block again, but this time back fist to the bridge of the opponent's nose. Next, use bottom fist against the floating ribs. Block and back fist to the opponent's nose. Follow quickly with a groin or lower stomach attack. Pull his head down and strike it with bottom fist. Block and bottom fist to the opponent's ribs. Spin around and block his second punch. Then use back fist against the ribs.
turn the opponent and use a back fist to attack the kidneys. Repeat the technique, but this time attack the back of the head. Then combine the two of them for a double attack with the same arm. Lock and strike to the kidney with bottom fist. Block the second punch and use bottom fist again, this time to the cheekbone. Block the opponent's punches, then use both bottom fists, simultaneously attack his temples and ribs. Finish with a single punch. Block the same way as before, but this time apply both bottom fists to the collarbones. Follow with a double attack to the ribs. Block and use a reverse bottom fist to the opponent's ear. Block his other punch and strike the other side. Then strike both collarbones one after the other. Trap his punching arm, pull his head down and use bottom fist against his spine. Pull the opponent's head down and then try using the top of your fist in a swinging uppercut to his throat. Block with bottom fist, then attack him with both fists. One strikes the base of the sternum, the other the spine. Strike down on his elbow with bottom fist, then use both fists to attack the spine. And now we have a demonstration of strikes to some of the more effective atemi points on the body. Jiu-Jitsu is the traditional art of the battlefield and so it has training techniques in its syllabus for dealing with weapon attacks. This demonstration shows some of the basic principles of knife defense and that is performed for us here by Terence Parker. Note that you never stand still but engage the opponent in a flow of movement, moving even as he moves. And always watch that knife. Never let the opponent regain the upper hand once you have caught it. Maintain a safe distance that keeps you just out of reach of that knife blade. Remember, he should always need to step forward to reach you. But don't withdraw too far, otherwise you will waste time closing on him. There is no fixed knife defense routine within the WJJF. Experienced high grades are expected to adapt techniques from the syllabus and apply them to a formal series of attacks. Let's look closer and see how many points we can pick out. This is how a different high grade interprets knife defense techniques. 
In this case, it's Kenneth Blundell. Despite the different techniques used, the principles remain the same. Here are some further examples in slow motion. Pivoting on the front leg is of vital importance in the execution of this technique, whilst applying pressure against the elbow. Step back while blocking, pivot on heel, and kick to the knee. Take down and apply pressure to shoulder, trapping the arm. And releasing the knife. This is a defense against a frontal feint which turns into a backward slash. Lean away and parry with outside block. Change to an upward block with figure four lock. Make sure your elbows are together and kick to back of knee into takedown. Step away from attack and block. Strike to jaw with palm heel. Take the wrist and use an outer wind. Snap elbow against the leg. And lock arm, head and leg. Pivot on the left leg using a scooping block. Take wrist and strike. Turn under the arm, taking care to block any further attack. Strike. Then throw, applying pressure against the elbow. Attacker pushes and lunges. Step back and use outside block. Follow up with knife hand to ribs. Lock the elbow. Take down and turn attacker into back hammer lock. Step back and block. Kick to groin. Take the arm in a circular movement into a wrist and shoulder lock. Take down and drop your knee into the elbow. The short stick, or baton, is a favourite traditional weapon of many WJJF high grades. Here, Terence Parker shows how it can be used in a variety of ways. He uses it to lock joints and apply strangles. 
He also uses it to deflect the opponent's attacks. The baton need not only be used in a swinging action, can also be used in the manner of a straight thrust to the atemi points. See how many of these uses you can pick out in the demonstration and work out your own system of baton training. A kata is a performance of technique, in this case, of blocks. These are linked together into a series of moves. The kata of blocks is performed here by John Stedman, a senior instructor in the WJJF. The purpose of the kata is to provide practice in the wide range of blocks used by jiu-jitsu. This is important because many students are in a hurry to apply their techniques and, as a result, the efficiency of their blocks is less than it might be. The kata encourages students to learn the method, form and application of each of the blocks used in jiu-jitsu. Look for both straight and circular blocks, for those which use one arm and those which make a double sweep. Some blocks use the forearm, others the palm or knife edge of hand. Some blocks work well from close range, others are better from further away. In all cases, the object is to divert the opponent's attack and make him vulnerable to your counterattack. Learn to time the application of your blocks so they are made early when the opponent's technique is building in force. Lighter students should not try to meet the force of an attack full on since this may lead to injury. This is particularly the case when deflecting kicks. Shed large amounts of impact energy by allowing the blocking arm to give slightly or allow the two forearms of X-block to slide apart but not so far that the attack reaches you. This video is the third in a series created by Robert Clark for the grading system of the WJJF. Earlier videos featured here are available from the World Jiu-Jitsu Federation, Barlow's Lane, Fazakali, Liverpool 9, Merseyside.